You know, it seems like for the most part, seasonal anime has a habit of painting Japan in a positive light. What I mean is that I've watched so much anime and it seems to me that Japan is one of the most cleanest places to ever exist. Is that true? Of course not, no country has no poverty, but because a lot of shows put the focus on Tokyo, it does give off that impression. But even Tokyo has some poverty and anime never really shows it. You know what? I need a show to take me out of my fairy tale ideas of Japan and bring it right down to the gutter. Ooh, I like it. Under Ninja is a scene in anime that does just that. So I was a bit skeptical about this. I mean, a show about ninjas? Really? I mean, ninjas are fine, but after Shinobi no Itoki, I don't think I could bear another poorly told ninja story. So I was on high alert, but let's put that to the side for now. The story was made by Kengo Hanazawa, who has a few mangas under his belt, which all offer a unique style compared to your regular mangas. In 2018, he published Under Ninja under Kodansha's Seinen magazine, and is currently ongoing with 11 volumes and more to come. It was then announced in 2021 that Tezuka Productions would adapt the manga. So Tezuka Productions is a studio that's been around the block to say the least, as it's worked on some fantastic projects like the Blackjack series, Astro Boy, and other stories by Osamu Tezuka interestingly enough. You know, I spent 20 minutes researching why there's so many shows based on Osamu Tezuka, because that sounded really odd. But then I looked at the name of the studio again, and I realised this is the production studio that Osamu Tezuka founded. My brain. But that's old news, as the studio would move on from those stories and into groundbreaking stuff like quintessential quintuplets and Cafe Terrace and its goddesses. I joke, as there is an audience for this stuff, and I can't say much about it since I watched both. Well, I still need to finish Quintessential, but I have watched Cafe Terrace, and to be honest, it's okay. I mean, it's worth watching to see scenes like this. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> anyway, it would seem that Tezuka would be stepping away from the bread and butter and go to more serious stories. Yeah, it looks really different and that art style is pretty unique for me. So why don't we strap down and watch some Under Ninja? So the story begins on a school rooftop and we're introduced to people who look a bit old to be actual students and you would be right on the money to think that, as these three are in fact ninjas who have been tasked to infiltrate this school to kill a target. It's not clear who it is, but we can see the different characters involved in this ploy, but there's no banter, no camaraderie, not even a warm hello. But before they proceed, they encounter three other students who wear an excessive amount of makeup. I'm told that this trend is called Gangoro, and to be honest, it's quite fascinating. In any case, Kuro Kumagakure decides to take the lead as he faces his enemies, and before we can see a resolution, the anime decides to take five as we get sent back in time to uncover the events that led up to this moment. Now that is an extraordinary opening, it really hits you with vibes that you don't see a lot of in anime. I mean just by the first episode, you can see how grungy and dirty it is, but the fascinating thing is the story structure, as in the first batch of episodes, it involves going back to different points in time to provide context and introduce certain characters. Honestly, there's a lot to talk about, so let's break it down. <laughs> let's start with the world, and unlike most anime, we can see how shady the town is. As you look at the buildings, the schools, the people that live there, and you think, what a shithole. And to be honest, that's such a neat feeling, as so many times we see Japan as this clean country, when in reality, even Japan will have its dire inner cities filled with neglect and poverty. Like seeing this place reminds me of my town, since I live in a city known for its ghetto areas. All it's missing is the homeless people wandering around. Oh, and that human piece of shit you walk past on a number of occasions. I'm not kidding, I was walking down the pavement and I was like, that did not come from a dog. And then I was just looking at it like, that's a big one. I do apologise for ruining your meal, and I will strive to be much better. Maybe. Probably. Probably not. But this highlights the work these ninjas do, 
as it's not always clean and neat as you think. And it does fit with what we know about ninjas when you think about it, as most ninjas in history were peasants from small villages who banded together to protect themselves from the lords. So it almost makes sense that ninjas are transposed from peasants to people living under the poverty line. But man is it depressing seeing these houses and the people that live there are the worst. From single dads who take their frustration of life on their children to overworked employees who can never get out of their environments. So they waste the time and money they have on getting pissed for that sweet release. And of course there's that weird old man who hangs around the children parks and you're certain he's crazy so you avoid him like the plague. Oh and he lactates too. Weirdo. So yeah, I quite like this setting, and it's the perfect backdrop for the story, which is really unusual. Mm. So the story is a weird one, as instead of a linear path, we jump around different times as we follow the characters' movements, but the cast is decently sized, meaning we're following numerous characters who have their own goals. Like we'll be following this guy for a bit, then all of a sudden we'll be following this girl who has their own arcs. It becomes really difficult to follow, as each of the characters outside the trio has their own priorities and sometimes these guys will interact with each other so we'll see them again from the perspective of another character but their plans and ideas are tangentially relevant to the main plot of the series. Hell, there are times the story will just forget characters and for a number of episodes we don't see what happened to them at all. But then the opposite is also true as we see new characters pop up in the middle of the series that have nothing to do with the main plot as you start scratching your head as you try to put it all together. Hell, there's even a cat which is also a side character who has his own story and it's the weirdest thing ever because at that point, the story goes completely batshit as it explores some ridiculous concepts. <coughs> well, that was unusual. Yeah, I'm on the fence if I like it or not, because I do like stories where it allows me to piece the narrative together myself, and the story just gives me hints about it. And there are games that does this really well, like Aegis Rim, Return of the Oberdin, and Chance of Sin, nah, that does not rhyme. Now, I don't play a lot of video games these days, but Chance of Sin, nah was one I just had to play, because I love the idea of a game where you're in the Tower of Babel, and you encounter different societies who speak different languages. And it's your job to climb the tower while learning the languages of each society and understanding who they are, what they believe and why there's so much division. You have to figure out this story as it felt like I was making a difference as I was connecting it all. But here, I never felt that satisfaction and when I was able to understand it, the show would continue to find ways to be more confusing. It gets frustrating over time but I do give it points for being unpredictable. You never know what's around the corner and I admire a show that can keep me on edge like that. But still, I would like the show to throw me a bone here and there. So why don't I try to explain this weird story and give my thoughts on the characters. <laughs> so in this world, the ninjas had formed an organization which were used for infiltration and assassinations, which is all well and good. However, at the end of the Pacific War, the ninjas were unearthed and disbanded. But despite that, the ninjas are still out there in secret, doing what they always do while blending into society. But some don't have that luxury of being a full-time ninja, so they make do by other means, like Kuro, who works ninja part-time, and when he's not working, he fleeces from his neighbours and steals their beer. When you have the means, right? But the story here brings in some conflict with the ninja society, as there are different groups of ninjas who all have their own rules and ideas of how to operate. The main one is NIN, but they have recently been dealing with conflicts with another group that wishes to take them down. This other group goes by Under Ninja, but these guys are hell bent on taking NIN down for their own reasons, and it all comes down to the assassination attempt at the school. There are a lot of other details I've skipped but it's why I would recommend this anime to get the full picture. And these characters can be quite something. Yeah, I need to talk about these guys as the cast is pretty diverse and colourful when you think about it, as you have Kuro who is an exceptional ninja, but he comes off as a slob. With his scruffy beard, unkept clothes and the fact that he walks anywhere barefoot, which is kind of gross actually. But despite being a scruff, he's the man you need for this job. Even though the guy follows his own rules, as he does stuff which doesn't make sense, but because of his skills in manipulation and combat, 
you get the feeling that there's more to it than he's letting on. And his co-workers are just as peculiar as this girl who's skilled in her own right also has the hobby of editing this dude's work. And by editing, I mean critiquing his work to shit. Poor guy. I couldn't be that harsh. But with that hairstyle, anything is... I'm just kidding. And then there's this guy who... Um... Yeah, me neither. But these guys don't fail to be unpredictable, and some of these characters really surprised me, like this Russian dude, and they actually got a Russian voice actor for him, which I found pretty cool that they went to that effort. I don't know what his performance is like, but he sounded fine to me. Also, we get to hear some pretty good American accents from these Japanese actors, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's surprisingly well done compared to other shows. So massive props to the studio for getting some good people on board. As each of these characters doesn't fail to keep me hooked. Some more so than others. Sasamada, yoroshiku. Oh, that explains a lot, Hang on. <laughs> of course. Under Ninja is aptly sneaking its way through the season, and it's a show that is worth your attention. While the story itself can be confusing, the series offers a refreshing take on ninjas and a more grungy perspective of Japanese life, while offering some batshit antics that can blow your mind at how stupid it is. If there's a second season, I'll attempt to piece the story together because I'll need to ponder to figure out what the hell was going on in this show. Well, that's a job for another time. But Under Ninja might not be everyone's cup of tea, but like the ninjas of old, it comes with many surprises. 